Chanel is coming for us and they're so exceptionally rude that they're coming for us not with one but with two new collections at least they're coming for me okay I am so incredibly tempted by their two newest collections so in this video today we're going to do some pet pairing and at the same time try to talk myself out of the products from those collections that I'm really attracted to. So let's chat about the two collections while I'm applying my makeup. I'm going to start as usual with my Inglot eyeshadow base. So the two collections that I'm referring to are the New Quad, the Eclat de Nuit and the Le Beige Winter collection that features a number of different items in it but the ones that I am the most attracted to are the three blushes, the ones with the snowflakes. And I think I talked about these blushes before and I talked about um, finding it a little bit strange that they're releasing these colors for the winter. But now that I've seen, you know, people review this and I've seen the actual colors, I understand where they're going with this collection. And I actually really like what they're doing with this collection. It's a really nice, very themed collection and the theme is executed really well. I have to give it to them. And the quad that I'm referring to, the Eclat de Nuit, if I didn't have things in my collection that are extremely similar to what this quad represents and features, I would have bought that in heartbeat. And I'm not giving any sort of guarantees that eventually I will not actually go and buy the quad and the blush that I'm eyeballing because the temptation is very real. For my foundation I'm going to take the Estee Lauder uh, Double Wear so I don't know if you're aware of the two collections, in case you're not aware, I'm going to try and put screenshots of, uh, at the very least, the items that I'm attracted to, so the quad and the three blushes, so that you can see what I'm referring to. But I'm sure that if you're a luxury makeup lover, you have seen these all over the internet because everyone's been talking about them, and honestly, for a good reason. And even worse, these are actually available in the Netherlands. Uh, I've seen them already on the Dutch Chanel website. I've also seen them on the local retailers. At least I saw them on Douglas. I haven't really checked on Easy Party. But uh, Easy Party also tend to receive these limited edition collections because I recall a couple of months ago I thought that the uh, two blushes that came out for the fall, the orange one that was in my favorites, the beige coral i thought they would be exclusive to the chanel website because honestly i just didn't have much experience with uh, limited edition chanel items i'm going to do the uh, concealer now and i'm going to take my uh, dior skin correct as usual in the shade 1n um so i bought it off the chanel website full price completely unaware that eventually it will come to easy party and i recall even uh, letting everyone on instagram know that when easy party was having 25 percent off the two blushes were included in the discount. So if I had known that these sort of items eventually end up on Easy Party or Douglas, I would have waited because I would much rather, you know, shop from those retailers because especially with, well, no, actually with both, I can uh, accumulate points when I make purchases and I can buy them um, on discount when they do their shopping nights, which happens quite often. They don't always have Chanel in their discounted uh, items when they do these sales. I think Chanel is often excluded from those, but when they do, it's a pretty sweet deal to get 25% off on Chanel items because they're so expensive. I'm going to take the Charlotte Tibl Tibblery, Tilbury <laughs> Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Um, so the quad is, I want to say, around 60 euros around here i think it's 61 and the um blush is actually more expensive than the quad for whatever reason the blush is 65 euros which is really preposterous for a blush but i'm pretty sure the pumpkin one from the fall was also this expensive i just like didn't even think twice when i bought it because i wanted it so very much uh the one with the snowflake i will consider very hard and uh, the other thing i'm considering is waiting a little bit until they start popping up on a vintage and marked plots so that I can get them secondhand. In fact, I I don't know if I regret it, but I could have bought the shade of the blush that I'm interested in off of Vinted a couple of days ago because someone was selling it brand new for 45 euros. I'm quickly going to do my brows now with the Too Faced Laminating Brow Wax. This is actually my new tube of this product, the old one. I scraped everything out. It was completely gone. Um, but anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, even if I end up buying the blush here with 25% off, I will still not have I will still not get such a good deal as I saw on Vinted the other day. So I might regret 
ultimately my choice not to get it off of Vinted because 45 euros for a brand new uh, collection product is actually not a bad price and I already went back to check today and it was already gone you know quite logically but you know um, in the end the hope is that I'm going to resist the temptation to buy both of them and I will buy none of them or at the very least only one of them and I think out of the two items it makes more sense for me to get the eyeshadow palette because the eyeshadow palette looks very unique and like, like just such a gorgeous color story whereas the blush is in a color that I don't necessarily wear very often and I'm not actually sure how this blush is going to look like and translate in real life. I'm going to be extra and I'm actually going to contour a little bit with my Victoria Beckham contour stylus in the shade Sandstone and then we're going to do a bit of uh, bronzing but I'm just applying two very little stripes here underneath uh, my cheekbone and I'm going to blend that out with my only <laughs> Wayne Goss brush this is the the Wayne Goss 01 brush. I bought this brush many years ago when I was first getting into Fude and obviously Wayne Goss brushes were some of the most talked about, you know, more affordable, more affordable, like more approachable, let's say, Fude brushes. Um, and I wanted a good brush for foundation. Unfortunately, I did not like this brush at all for foundation. And basically it's sitting in my uh, brush collection, barely being touched. And the only thing I really like to use it for is cream bronzers, cream contour type products and occasionally blush, but not really even blush because I like to stipple my blush. Um, and I have to say this brush is a bit scratchy for my taste if I'm being completely honest. I'm sorry, Wengos. I'm going to take the um, Nude Honey bronzer from Pat McGrath Labs to quickly uh, bronze up but keep it, you know, a little bit more on the neutral side. So the shade of the blush that I am very attracted to is Mauve Glacé, if that's how you pronounce it. I really don't know. But basically the collection comes with three colors. One of them is a light pink and from what I've seen it seems to be a warm pink so not even like a cool toned barbie pink it's just more of like a warmer pink with a nice sheen to it the shade that i'm talking about uh, looks to be a very raspberry type color so it's pink but it has slight hints of purpliness to it and last but not least the color that i thought i would be the most attracted to which is the coral which has a gold sheen to it but Corals are the kind of shade that I very much enjoy wearing, so I have about a million of them. And I thought, okay, what is like unique in this collection that um, I think would suit me still? And I'm not sure that this mauve blush would actually suit me because these more purpley type of blushes are a little bit tricky for me. Uh, but it looks like, it very much looks like, it is similar to one of the colors. In fact, if I'm being completely honest, I think all three colors in the collection seem like they're very similar to the blushes that are present in the Blushing Delights Bridgerton 2 because we're talking about the warm yellow with a sheen, a coral with a gold sheen and a mauvey pinky purple with a sheen. So essentially, I already have all the three colors from this collection, so I really do not need any of these uh, but it's really not for the colors that I'm buying them obviously uh, I'm buying it because I think the packaging is super cute of the La Beige collection and I like the little snowflake imprint so that's like the stupidest reason to covet a blush like this but you know I'm silly like that anyway so the blush that I'm going to apply today and I actually already wore yesterday is this one here because I think it's the most similar to mauve glacé which I'm lasting after and uh I have to say I actually really enjoyed the effect that this blush had on my skin because it's uh, not an unflattering shade on me as you will also see it gives me exactly the effect that I think the Dior collection is meant to convey which is this slightly you know beaten from the cold cheek and it has a sheen to it exactly like the blushes from the Chanel collection um, so if you think about it in terms of what the product does, I absolutely do not need this blush. So I really, really hope 
that I can talk myself out of it. But I do really like that it has also reminded me a little bit of this color from the Blushing Delights palette because the two shades that I use the most often are obviously the coral and I've rediscovered this warm pink here, uh, especially for the spring months. But the purple one has always been one that I shy away from because I'm a little afraid of blushes that have a bit of like a uh, purple vein to them. But this one actually looks very nice because if you swatch it out, let me just quickly swatch it on the back of my hand. It doesn't really translate purple like at all. It looks exactly, honestly, like a raspberry pink, doesn't it? Not to mention that if I really wanted to go for a raspberry color in a beautiful, like even baked formula, I could open my uh, Bridgerton 1 eyeshadow palette and there is a color in there, like one of the uh, baked, like smooth baked eyeshadows in there is exactly that kind of raspberry. And I think I over applied the blush a little bit on this side. So I am going to call the reinforcements here. <laughs> Taking the smooth buffer from Sonia G, which is the ultimate, you know, fixer of mistakes when it comes to your face makeup. And I'm just going to blend the raspberry shade out. It is also the absolute perfect weather in the Netherlands right now to be wearing a blush like this and creating this effect because uh, we're finally getting some of like more proper winter cold. It is minus like six or seven outside. It's very, very chilly and there's like this horrendous, very cold wind, which feels like icicles poke in your face. So it is in fact the perfect weather to be wearing a blush like this. But also weather like this literally lasts for three days in the Netherlands. So I will be wearing this blush for like a whole of three days. Because I don't think I will wear a shade like this in any other time of the year. So yet another reason for me not to be buying this blush. Sticking with Chanel, I'm going to take the Raf the Camellia highlighter, a product that I do not regret picking up at all because it has turned into one of my favorites in terms of like a more cool tone winter highlighter because it is just perfect for colors like that uh, purple blush from um, Pat McGrath Labs which requires something a little bit more neutral to cool toned. I'm going to spritz my sponge with a little bit of Fix Plus and then we can continue onwards to the eyes where in order to replicate the effect of the Eclat de Nuit quad I am going to be using quite a variety of different products and more specifically I'm going to be using the Ultra Suede Brown Kit from Pat McGrath Lab. So chances are extremely high that most of you will not have this um, kit. So as you have also seen from the thumbnail, it's going to be a little bit of mixing and matching here to create like a somewhat similar effect. Something that uh, is not present in the kit from Pat McGrath Labs, the Ultra Suede Brown Kit, is the um, type of like neutral brown that is present in the Eclat de Nuit. So I'm going to have to pull out for something else and the only thing really that comes in the ballpark is from my signature quad from Victoria Beckham Beauty. So I'm going to um, mix this shade and this shade together to create a somewhat similar effect to what that shade represent, represents, I'm sorry, which is a more neutral to cool brown shade. So I'm first going to apply this one through my crease and then just the tiniest bit of this one to create a somewhat similar effect. And again, I've done this already, so I know that it, at least from what I can tell from the photos and the looks that people have done, it creates quite a nice similar effect on the eye. This color is very light, so it requires a little bit of building. But like I said, I really like that kind of versatility that the product has. I'm now going to slightly dip in this um, neutral brown shade to also fluff that right here in the actual, you know, fold of my eye where the crease is, just to create a tiny bit more definition there. I do actually think Chanel has done really good with this quad. It's such a beautiful, unique color story, very much fitting the time of the year, and it comes in the beautiful baked tone formula. Speaking of baked tone formula, the reason I do not need a black in a baked tone formula is because, like I said, I already have a beautiful baked gold from the um, Ultra Suede Brown Kit from Pat McGrath. So I'm going to now take this shade, just the tiniest bit of that, and apply here in the outer corner of the eye, you know, to sort of emulate the effect of that quad. Honestly, I think the shades that I applied so far 
are I don't know if they're spot on dupes obviously because I don't know I don't I've never touched the quad but from what I have seen from people's looks it creates a very similar effect now I am going to town this weekend and like I said because our retail stores here tend to receive these kind of limited edition collections eventually I'm definitely going to store and try to find both the blushes and the quad to swatch them in real life because if in real life I find these even more beautiful than they are in people's videos I might decide to wait for a sale and get them or you know the opposite might happen where I would feel like in real life they are actually not that impressive which will you know calm down the feelings of lust that I'm currently experiencing. And now to the fun layering part. First I'm going to take a little bit of the NYX glitter glue. The eyeshadow obviously that has everyone you know peeing their pants with joy is the little flaky a taupe silver green goodness that is present in the Chanel quad which I think will be the most difficult one to dupe out if you one don't have the um, ultra suede brown kit or like anything similar. I know that in terms of color it might be a little bit more easy to find a dupe but I think the combination of the color and the, the texture of this eyeshadow are truly very unique. The uh, texture from Chanel seems to be like the baked dome slightly flaky formula which obviously will be a little bit more glittery on the eye. I'm going to take a little bit of this green like olive green shade from the Sid Seduction palette and I'm just going to apply it with my fingers and the idea of this shade is that it's going to create a little bit of like that smoky base that the shade from Chanel has because that shade certainly seems to be a little bit smoky it's not like a bright metallic glitter shade it has definitely a little bit of smoke in the base and I don't want the smoke to be black because I don't think that the shade has a black base to it I think it's either a dark gray or maybe even like a very dark olive green which is why I'm opting for the shade from this queen from Pat McGrath to create the base for that shade the next thing I'm going to layer and I think the one that's going to be the most difficult for people to dupe out because like I said very few people out there are going to have this uh, kit in their collection but this is one of the eyeshadows from that ultra suede brown kit from Pat McGrath Labs that instantly reminded me of the new Chanel eyeshadow. This is the shade Mercury and Mercury has the same inexplicable tones to it as the Chanel shade. It is not a silver, it is not a green, it is something in between with like slightly even taupe tones to it. So what I'm going to do with this shade, and this shade by the way just on its own is absolutely stunning, but I think the, like I said, the Ch Ch Chanel shade has a bit more depth to the tone. So that's why I applied the green and now I'm going to layer this one over top of that and you can immediately tell what a beautiful effect that creates because the light green is giving a little bit of body to Mercury but Mercury still has a lot of like light to it and I think the two make an absolutely beautiful combination. Now another aspect to that um, Chanel quad that I think is not present in the eyeshadows that I featured so far. It seems like it has tiny flecks of like a somewhat more antique cooler toned gold uh, going on and the shade Mercury as beautiful as it is doesn't really have like large chunks of glitter it's not super sparkly it's a very smooth metallic it definitely has beautiful twinkle to it but it is not exactly a glittery shade and it doesn't have that like interesting antique gold flake glitter to it which i think is what i can see from that chanel eyeshadow again i might be imagining that at this point i might be like uh idolizing this eyeshadow and creating something that is totally not it but you know we're going with it so um next you're going to see something that i purchased very re recently because i sort of wanted to buy a dupe for astroline from the divine droid quint so i thought oh maybe the liquid eyeshadow in um, cosmic chartreuse would be it it is not it and when i swatched it and i realized that i have a dupe for it in my collection i also realized that i already knew that because i feel like i heard from someone that this shade and the shade, like the olive green shade in the Sorcery palette from Lisa Eldridge are, are dupes 
and they are indeed extremely similar to each other. So I didn't really need Cosmic Chartreuse because it doesn't dupe out Astrolime and it is essentially a dupe of something I have. But I do really like this formula a lot. Uh, I like these sort of colors. So I will see how this eyeshadow fits into my collection and if it doesn't, I will just do something with it. But what I will use it for today is I want to create a little bit of that golden sparkle because if you share this shade out, uh, you definitely retain some of that like green tone to the eyeshadow, but you can also see a little bit of gold flakes appearing. So I'm going to layer this, like a very light layer of this, because I don't want it to overtake the look, and I'm going to layer it over Mercury in an attempt to recreate that uh, Chanel shade. Now, layering so many shades to create just the one is obviously way too, way too much work, you know, it's total overkill. So, um, and it's very well possible that I am, like I said, totally overthinking what that Chanel eyeshadow is all about. It's possible that the Chanel eyeshadow is so much simpler than what I'm creating over here, but there's only so much I can tell from the photos and the videos. So, like I said, if I get the chance to swatch this eyeshadow in real life, I think that would give me the best idea of how close I was with duping it by creating this layering. And I think I'm going to scoop out the um, Cosmic Chartreuse shade and I'm going to use it or try to use it as an inner corner highlight, although I'm afraid it's just not light enough for that. I think that's the problem a little bit with this shade. If it had been light enough to be an inner corner highlight, I would not have been too mad, but I think it's too dark for that. Let me try it anyway. Mm, I might put a little bit of something champagne over top to lighten the tone because this is not light enough and bright enough for my personal liking. I'm just going to take a little bit of this Nabla highlighter here to lighten the tone of Cosmic Chartreuse in the inner corners. And I'm going to keep it very simple on the lower lashes. I'm just going to apply the uh, mid-tone brown shade to complete the look. And I am dying to check this look out under artificial lighting. I would literally never have thought of this pairing and layering myself if it hadn't been for the inspiration from this Chanel quad. So whatever the reality actually is, I'm very glad that I got inspired to do this look because I love how all of these shades layered together. Obviously, total overkill if you want to like replicate this quad uh, to have all of these products. It, it would be a complete coincidence if someone has all of these products. But if you do, if you're one of like the three people out there who does actually have all of these products, then you probably don't need that new Chanel quad, just like I don't. Uh, which again, isn't a guarantee that I'm not going to buy it. On my lips, I am wearing one of my new favorite combos, which is the Affair lipstick from Lisa Eldridge with a little bit of La Mepri. So this one is in her velvet formula, so this one is a matte, and La Mepri is in her uh, loosened formula, so it creates a little bit of a sheen on the lips, which is very comfortable now that it's so cold and dry outside. So I am very, very happy with uh, how this look turned out. I'm super curious to swatch this palette out in real life, so I really hope I get the chance to do that. Um, I think it will be a little bit easier for me to talk myself out of the blush because while well, I really love this cheek and I think it looks beautiful and like beaten and look very much the cold girl aesthetic, uh, I'm going to use it three days a year and I already have a shade in my collection that pretty much perfectly dupes it in terms of color and formula. So there's no reason for me to last after it. I think the item that I'm much more intrigued by really is the quad. Um, so I will see how that goes. I'm gonna try my best not to buy it but I give no guarantees. Anyway, do let me know what you thought about this uh, look and if you happen to have these items in your possession, how close do you think I am in duping out the vibes of these products? I do think the look may have turned out a little bit more green than in, it is in reality. I think in reality it's a bit more of like a gunmetal with the greenish goldish sage green, you know, vibes to it. Um, but Nonetheless, I think I really enjoy how this look turned out and I had a lot of fun playing around with these products. So let me know what you thought about this look. Thank you so much for watching as usual and I will see you in my next video. Bye!